Hello everyone, Jennifer Baker here. It is a beautiful day to make something fabulous together. So back in the early 90s, I taught myself how to use a wood burning tool and painstakingly made this cutting board with one of my recipes on it. I shared this cutting board with everyone recently and many of you asked me to teach you how to burn wood. Well, these days there are new and easier ways to do wood burning and I am going to show you several of those techniques. In fact, I I used one of those techniques to replicate my recipe onto another cutting board so my daughter can have a cutting board just like mine in her future home. Isn't that cool? So come with me and I will show you how to make beautiful wood burning projects easier and faster. Look at all of my new wood projects. In addition to the cutting board, I have a Santa cookie tray for the holidays and a really cool chillin' and grillin' sign for out near our new deck. Didn't these turn out so amazing? I just love how they look so high end, honestly. It's really hard to tell that they're homemade, if I say so myself. <laughs> all right, so just think of all of the things that you could add to these to personalize them for yourself, for your family, or someone that you wanna give a gift to possibilities are endless. So there are a few ways to burn designs into wood and I did a lot of testing so hopefully you won't have to. There are two really popular techniques, both use chemicals and stencils to burn the designs into wood and both are food safe which is definitely a huge plus. The first technique uses ammonium chloride which we can see right here. I tested this method while making the Santa cookie tray. The second technique I tested uses a scorch marker, which already contains all of the chemicals mixed within it. I made this grillin' and chillin' sign using the scorch marker method. And even though both of these methods are non-toxic and food safe, they do involve chemicals, so you definitely want to take extra safety precautions, which I will cover in more detail in this tutorial. But make sure you have all the personal protective equipment on hand so you are safe. So here's everything that we're going to need to make these awesome wood burn signs. A wood blank, first of all. I used these two wood blanks. They're both natural basswood with no finish, which is important. I sized my designs for these particular wood boards, but they can be resized as needed. And I will show you how to add the hardware to hang the grillin and chillin sign to. And as I mentioned, you can use either ammonium chloride or a scorch marker to add your designs to the wood. If you use ammonium chloride, you will also need Thicket, which is this right here, and it's a food and beverage thickening agent, which will help turn the ammonium chloride into a thick paste or gel. I will demonstrate how to apply that with a paintbrush in this tutorial. And we need a heat gun to burn the design into our wood. I've got my heat gun right over here. I even experimented with using the Cricut Easy Press, so stay tuned to see how that worked out. To make the stencils, I'm going to use my Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine, but you can also use the original Maker, any of the Explore cutting machines, or even the Joy if it's a small project. We'll also need some permanent vinyl and transfer tape. And the color of the vinyl does not matter at all because we are using it as a stencil. We also need a standard grip machine mat, a weeding tool, and a scraper. And most importantly, as always, safety first. Make sure you have a respirator, a pair of gloves, something to protect your eyes since we're working with chemicals, and I also recommend an apron. And if you're feeling at all nervous about trying this, I think this tutorial will put you at ease. I even have a fantastic tip for what to do if you make a mistake, because we all make mistakes. My tip will help you avoid having to start all over again. So let me show you where to get these fun designs and then we will get started. Step one, get my free wood burn design files. First, let's prepare our files for the two designs. My adorable holiday cookie plate design for Santa and his helpers fits on a 12 by 12 inch round wood slice or tray. And my grillin' and chillin' sign for hanging grilling tools out on the deck fits on a 24 inch long plank. 
To get my free design files, just go to my blog at jennifermaker.com slash 357 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching the page for design number 357 and then click it to download a zip file with SVG files for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, DXF files, and printable PDFs for cutting by hand. Let me show you how to cut these stencil designs on a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload the SVG cut file to Cricut Design Space. If you're unsure how to unzip files, go to jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how. Here's what my Woodburn designed SVG files will look like in Cricut Design Space. Now, unless you want to customize or resize these designs, they are all ready to go. If you do need to resize the stencils to fit on your wood tray or sign, now is a good time to do that. Measure your wood sign or tray to see how much space you have. Then make sure to allow for some blank space around the edges. Always good to have a margin. Then resize the design in design space to fit your wood by clicking and dragging the arrow on the lower right corner of the bounding box on the canvas until it is the correct dimension or change the width and height of the design in the size boxes on the menu bar at the top of the canvas. The Santa cookie tray design fits perfectly on a 12 by 12 inch machine mat, and the chillin' and grillin' sign fits on a 12 by 24 inch machine mat, so the, the longer one. Now, if you don't have a 24 inch long machine mat, I've got you covered, just look for the file name that starts with the word sliced. I already spliced the design into smaller pieces, so you can cut them using a standard 12 by 12 mat. Just be sure that all layers are selected if you resize them. Now I'm going to show you how to make both designs, but I'm going to start with the Santa cookie tray design. Once you're all ready to cut, select your machine on the top menu bar and then click make it. Now, unless you're using Smart Vinyl on the Cricut Maker 3 or Explorer 3, you can select on mat and click done. And if you don't see this window, don't worry about it. Now, prepare your mat by moving the design so it's centered on the mat that you see here on the prepare screen. That way you have some extra margin space around the stencil when you cut it out. And then click continue. Now select your base material when prompted. I used premium vinyl permanent and I recommend more pressure to ensure the best and cleanest cut. Now if you're using a machine mat like I did, place your premium vinyl permanent glossy on a green standard grip mat with a shiny side up. If you are using smart vinyl, which you totally can here, that should also go into your Cricut shiny side up. And as mentioned, you can use any color since this is only going to be a temporary stencil, so it doesn't matter what color it is. Now you'll be prompted to load your fine point blade and your machine mat into your Cricut. And when you're all ready, click the flashing button to begin cutting. Step two, prepare the wood. While your vinyl is cutting, you'll want to prepare your wood tray or sign. I used basswood with a natural bark edge, but you can use any wood you want. Just make sure that your wood is unfinished with no stain, paint, or wax because you need to be able to actually burn the wood grain during there are techniques, right? If you have any stain or paint or wax on your wood, you may end up with unpredictable results and you really don't want to be hitting any finishes that could be toxic, okay, because that's not safe. Now lightly sand the face of the wood plank that you plan on doing your wood burning onto. This helps to make sure that your vinyl stencil adheres well to the wood and doesn't allow any of the wood burning chemicals to bleed underneath the stencil. My basswood was already pretty smooth, so I used the fine side of a sanding sponge to sand it. Just be sure not to sand away any of the rough bark if you plan on maintaining the rough edge look. But of course, it's up to you. Now, if your wood is rough when you begin, start by sanding it with the medium side of the sanding sponge until the wood is smooth, and then finish it by sanding it lightly again with the fine side. And then be sure to wipe or blow away any sawdust. I used a lint roller to make sure my surface was clean of any debris. You want it to be as smooth as possible. Step three, weed and transfer the stencil. 
Once your vinyl is all cut, weed at your design carefully, removing all of the excess vinyl that you don't need. But remember, this is a stencil, so you are going to be weeding in reverse of what you normally would do. You want to remove all the parts that you want to burn into the wood, which are the parts that you normally would leave on your carrier sheet, right? So be extra careful that all the small pieces and the centers to your letters stay on the carrier sheet. If this is your first time weeding or you just need a refresher, I have lots of great tips and tricks over on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash cricket dash tips. All right, so next cut a piece of transfer tape just a little bit larger than your weeded vinyl piece. You want to use standard grip transfer tape. Remove the backing from the transfer tape and apply the transfer tape to your vinyl stencil by holding the tape in the shape of a taco or a U shape and then put the bottom of your taco onto the middle of your design. And then smooth the tape over the stencil from the center outward, making sure to press out and remove any bubbles. When the transfer tape is in place, use a scraper tool to transfer the stencil design to the transfer tape. It's important to scrape it really well to transfer the vinyl. It helps to scrape it from both the transfer tape side and the carrier sheet side. And then carefully peel away the carrier sheet from the vinyl. If little bits don't want to transfer to your tape when you do this, scrape it again and then pay careful attention to those problem areas. And as I mentioned, I will show you how to assemble the Santa cookie tray first, but the steps for cutting the vinyl are the same for both. Now place your design on your nice, clean, and smooth wood, being mindful that it is straight and centered onto it. If you need help centering your stencil, you can measure and mark the center point of your wood with a pencil first. Then you can fold your vinyl and into that taco U shape and line up the bottom of the U over your center mark. Then gently press the vinyl down, starting in the center and working outward. Make sure both the vinyl and the transfer tape are adhered to the wood. Use your fingers to push out any bubbles or creases in the vinyl. Now pick up a corner of the transfer tape and slowly remove it from your vinyl. Use your fingers again to make sure the vinyl is securely adhered to the wood without any noticeable bubbles or creases. You want to make sure it is firmly adhered to the wood since it's a stencil and you don't want any bleeding to occur. So that's more important than usual that everything is pushed down really well. Now I used a soft basswood so I didn't have any issues getting the vinyl to stick to my wood. In fact, my vinyl wanted to stick really well. <laughs> but if you're having problems, first check to make sure that your wood is unfinished with no stain, paint, oil, or wax. Be sure to sand your wood surface until it's smooth and make sure your wood is clean of any little bits of wood or any adhesive or anything like that. You can use a lint roller to really make sure you've got it all off. And then to prevent oils from transferring from your hands, use transfer tape and don't handle the adhesive side of the vinyl. And be sure to burnish the vinyl really well. Step four, burn your wood with ammonium chloride. So first I'm going to show you how to burn designs into your wood using ammonium chloride. I made my Santa cookie tray this way. So grab a glass bowl and some measuring spoons. All the chemicals you, that you're going to use are food safe, so you can safely use items that you already have in your kitchen. Ammonium chloride is a food additive found in things like cheeses, puddings, spread cereals, condiments, licorice, and sports drinks. Thicket is a cornstarch-based food and beverage thickener. Even though these are food safe, some people may be sensitive to ammonium chloride. Uh, so I want you to wear protective gloves and eyewear when measuring, stirring, and applying it to the wood to prevent any skin or eye irritation. Also consider wearing a respirator and definitely do it in a well-ventilated area since ammonium chloride fumes decompose into ammonia, gas, and hydrochloric acid. All right, so in a glass bowl, measure out and combine these ingredients. One tablespoon of ammonium chloride. This is what will burn the wood once heat is applied. Eight teaspoons of thicket. This thickens the mixture into a gel so it doesn't bleed under the stencil.
and a half a cup of warm water. This recipe will make a lot of gel and you're only gonna need a really small amount if you're just making a couple of trays or signs. But it does keep for several weeks if stored in a covered glass container, such as a clean jar. Just be sure to store it in a cool location out of direct sunlight. Or you can just make a third of the recipe, which is approximately one teaspoon of ammonium chloride, two and a half teaspoons of thicket, and just eight teaspoons of water. Now stir well with a paintbrush and then let your mixture sit for 10 minutes or until the water is fully absorbed and a nice gel has formed. When your solution is the texture of a thick gel, use the paintbrush to pick some of the gel up. Wipe the excess on the side of the bowl. You only want enough left on your brush to lightly paint the gel onto the wood. Make sure you apply the gel to all parts of the wood that are showing through your stencil. Be sure to apply only a single thin coat of gel to the wood. You don't want too much gel since it would need to burn off before burning the wood and it might end up leaving a filmy appearance on top of your burn design. Plus, you really don't want to overwork the stencil and risk it bleeding underneath. Once everything is covered with a light coat, let it dry completely, which is about 10 to 20 minutes. Make sure the gel doesn't get on any part of the wood that you do not want to burn, so be careful. And once it's fully dry, carefully peel the vinyl off the wood. Use a weeding tool to help remove the uh, the little bits of vinyl that are stuck to the wood, like the little parts of letters and that kind of thing. Now, take your wood outside or to a very well ventilated area with your heat gun. And when you heat up chemicals, it will actually burn the wood, <laughs> so there will be smoke. The ammonium chloride will also emit ammonium gas and hydrochloric acid. Be sure to wear a respirator and eye protection. Remember, safety first. Now set your heat gun to at least 495 degrees Celsius. <laughs> I use the hottest setting on my heat gun, which is about 650 degrees Celsius. I added the extra heat because my wood tray is very thick, and I found that the thicker the wood, the more heat you can apply to speed things up. Move the heat gun over the design on the wood, making sure to keep it moving continuously. The design will magically appear and burn as it heats up. It is so cool. And always keep your heat gun moving so you don't accidentally overburn your wood. It is possible to burn parts of the wood that don't have ammonium chloride solution on it if you apply too much heat. And any knots or prominent wood grain will very likely darken quickly too. So be aware of that while you're heating your design. Now keep heating the wood surface until your design is the color you want. The longer you apply heat, the more burned and darker it will become. You can make the burned areas look as light or as dark as you want. I kept some of my areas of my image a little lighter and made some areas a little darker. Now rinse off the chemicals, making sure it's all completely removed and it's fine to rinse them off in your sink now your food safe tray is ready to use. You can stain and seal your tray if you want, but be aware that those chemicals may not make your tray food safe, depending on what you use. Simple mineral oil or beeswax is a good food safe alternative. And you can always use small bowls or napkins to serve your yummy cookies uh, for Santa and your carrots for the reindeer on. Now I want to show you something I discovered while I was experimenting. One of the wood trays I made had a lot of fissures and knots in the wood grain. And when I applied heat using the heat gun, the cracks and knots darkened. The result was a rustic look versus the more polished look of the tray without the fissures. Just be aware of this when selecting your wood so you get the results that you want. If you don't want it to look too rustic, try finding a piece of wood without many imperfections. If you do end up with a lot of fissures and cracks in your wood, if they're not too deep, you can just try sanding them out. A palm sander is handy for this. And like I said before, try to keep your heat gun moving and don't linger too long on those areas that have the fissures and the knots.
Step 5. Burn your wood using a scorch marker. I tried making my grillin' and chillin' sign using a scorch marker. My, <laughs> my first attempt was not very successful because it bled under my stencil. The marker is almost a watery consistency, so it's not really surprising that it bled in retrospect. I also couldn't get a very dark burn. I was underwhelmed with the result, to say the least. And I wasn't sure if it was my technique. Maybe I didn't let it dry long enough, or maybe I didn't apply enough, or I had too much liquid and it made it too wet. I wasn't sure. So I decided to try again. And this is what I did. Once the stencil was adhered to the sign, I shook the scorch marker really, really well for a minute or two. And then I primed the bullet tip by dabbing it on a paper towel. The scorch marker comes with both a bullet tip and a foam brush for applying the chemicals directly onto the wood. The brush is great for painting large areas, and the bullet tip seems easier to use in the small areas. I tried using both in all areas, and I applied only a small amount, hoping that it wouldn't bleed under the stencil this time. Once all the wood showing through the stencil was covered with a really thin coat of the scorch marker, I let it dry really well. The first time I let it sit for only about five minutes, so this time I let it dry for 20 minutes. And once it was dry, I carefully removed the stencil by peeling it off the wood. Then I heated up the design by constantly moving my heat gun over the wood. As the design heated, the chemicals started burning into the wood fibers. And the more heat I applied, the darker the burn became. But I found it never quite got a dark burn like the ammonium chloride did. Now the Scorch Marker Pro manufacturer recommends using a heat gun set to at least 700 degrees Fahrenheit. The thicker your wood, the higher your temperature should go. I used the gun set to the hottest setting it could go, which was about 650 degrees Celsius. And that's equivalent to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that was plenty hot enough. If you're using the scorch marker on a surface intended for food, it's okay to leave it unrinsed according to the manufacturer. You can apply a food safe finish like mineral oil or beeswax right over the top. Here are the results from my second attempt at using the scorch marker for the grillin' and chillin' sign. I am still not happy with the results. You can see that it bled again under the stencil causing a fuzzy and uneven edge. I wanted to love this method so much because it was super easy to apply, but I just couldn't get the good results that I'd hoped for. Maybe a different wood, such as a hardwood, would work better. I used basswood, which is a soft wood, and the bleeding happened right along the grain. For comparison, I made another chillin' and grillin' sign using the Imodium Chloride Gel Mixture and got this gorgeous result. This was a winner. Look at those beautiful crisp lines. The thickness of the gel really prevents bleeding. But let me tell you a, a little secret. There's actually one more way to do this. Step six, use an easy press instead of a heat gun. I really wanted to know whether someone without a heat gun could use a heat press or a Cricut Easy Press instead. So I tried it out. And guess what? It worked. You'll need to do something big like the sign in sections. And the burn results are not quite as dark as you can get from a heat gun, but it does work. So let me show you how that works. So set your temperature of your easy press to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and set the timer to 20 seconds. Cover your wood completely with a single layer of butcher paper and mentally divide your design into equal sections and press the first section for 20 seconds while lightly pressing down. Lift and move the easy press over to the next section and press for 20 seconds. Continue until each section has been pressed for 20 seconds. Then repeat another two times until each section has been pressed three times for a total of one minute. If your burned areas are not dark enough, you can continue in 20 second increments. Change out your butcher paper when it starts to get discolored to make sure you don't accidentally reapply any ghosted ammonium chloride gel back into the wood. I changed mine once about midway through. 
Now my plank wasn't perfectly flat, so I touched up areas using my Cricut Easy Press Mini. You can even do the whole thing using a mini if you want. Just be sure to always keep a layer of butcher paper between your plank and your Easy Press. If your design is smaller than the size of your Easy Press, then the, you only need to heat that one section three separate times for 20 seconds on each pressing. Just make sure to lift the Easy Press and check your progress after each pressing to make sure your design is not overcooking. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? And a great alternative if you don't have a heat gun that gets hot enough. Step 7. Put on your finishing touches. I decided that this version of the sign turned out the best, so I finished it off by adding hooks and hangers. To do this, line up a set of hooks along the bottom edge of the sign. Every plank is a slightly different size, so it's hard to tell exactly where you should align your hooks. But I pulled a tape measure across the bottom of my plank and equally spaced out the hooks along it. I started by centering one hook and then measuring about four and a quarter inches out from each side to place the next hooks and so on. Now with your hooks all lined up, use a pencil to mark each of the screw holes and then go back with a drill or a screwdriver to screw in half inch long screws. The basswood I used was soft enough that I could screw them in by hand with just using a Phillips head screwdriver, but a drill would be really quick and easy. To hang your sign, attach sawtooth hangers to the back of the sign along the top edge. I nailed in two hangers spaced a couple of inches inward from the short sides and about one inch down from the top edge. You might want to use a level to help you align them if you have one handy. Now put up your sign and hang some grilling tools from the hooks. So after doing all these projects and tests, I decided I really like the result of the ammonium chloride the best. You can just add the right amount of thicket thickener to control the consistency of the gel mixture so it doesn't bleed under the stencil, even if you're using a soft grainy wood. If you decide you want a more watery texture to paint onto a hardwood, you can just reduce the amount of thickener you use. Plus, you can get any amount of burn that you like from light to dark. I love the variation of burn colors I got just by playing around with the heat gun or the easy press. These would make super nice gifts for just about any occasion. And now that you know how to burn wood the easy way, you can use this technique with pretty much any design that you can think of. Oh, one last thing, and here's a really, really awesome tip. If you make a mistake, or if your design bleeds under the stencil for any reason, or you just don't like it, you can just sand down your wood and start over. Really, it's that easy. <laughs> Now, if you have any questions about using these wood burning techniques that I didn't answer in this tutorial or something else craft related that you think I could help with, let me know. Leave your question below this video or come ask in my awesome Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I cannot wait to see all of your amazing projects and I want to help you bring them to fruition. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. <laughs>